Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to spend some time solving certain problems related to inverse matrices. And as usually, in, in case of problems, I encourage you to go directly to unizor.com website. And uh, notes for this lecture contains basically all these problems uh, in a written form. And uh, please try to solve them all just by yourselves. Uh, it, it, I think it's very important to, to spend some time at least to familiarize yourself with the, the problem uh, even if you cannot really solve it. But these problems are really very very simple and uh, I'll spend a very very short period of time to present them. Alright, problem number one uh, actually most of them are like this. They are direct consequences from the definitions of uh, inverse matrix and others. So, problem number one, I have to prove this, that inverse matrix to the identity matrix is itself this same identity matrix. Well, let me first just give a simple example. I mean, obviously, if you have, let's say, a two-dimensional identity matrix and multiply it by itself, you will get, okay, the first row, first column of the result is product of uh, first row vector times first column vector, which is 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0, which is 1. Now, the element 1, 2, uh, first row, second column. Okay, so it's first row, second column. 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1, which is 0. Now, 2, 1, second row, first column, second row, first column, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 is 0. And element 2, 2, which is second row and second column, 0 times 0 plus 1, 1, that's 1. <coughs> so, obviously, we have the result of multiplication of matrix, of this matrix by this, is identity which means that this is inverse of this. Now, this is identi uh, identity, and this is identity, and this is identity. So that's actually the illustration of this particular rule, that reverse, inverse to identity is itself. How can I prove it? Well, to prove it, I have to, well, to prove that this is a, an inverse of this, I have to prove this, and I have to prove this, right? So multiplication of my original matrix by something which I consider might be an inverse on the right or on the left should be equal to identity. Well, if I claim that rever in inverse to identity is itself, I actually have to have this equality. and this. Now, if I think that these are equal, then that should be equal. And these are indeed true identities. Why? Because that's the definition of the identity matrix, right? So, if I multiply this by this, or this by this, left or right, I will get an identity, which means one is an inverse of another, by definition of the inverse, right? So, as I said, it's a direct consequence of the definition. Okay, next one. What if I will inverse matrix twice? So consider matrix is invertible. So from the matrix U, I get this one, which equals to identity matrix, with all diagonal elements equal to 1. And I know this. Again, this is a definition of inverse matrix. And I assume that my matrix U is invertible, which means uh, inverse matrix does exist. Now, what if I will um, try to inverse it again? Now, if I want to inverse again, 
Now, if I multiply it by something which I consider to be an inverse of this, now what should I get? Well, I should get identity, right? That's the properties, that's the definition, I don't need these parentheses, that's the definition of the uh, inverse matrix. But, look at this. This is exactly what I'm looking for. If instead of A, I will substitute, I will substitute U, I will get this. I know that U and U, uh, and, and, and U to the minus 1 are, um, that this is inverse of this, which means these are true identities which are given to me. So that means that A and U are exactly the same if you compare these two. And if you compare these two, you will see that A and U are exa exactly the same again. So this inverse matrix to the inverse matrix is actually the original matrix itself. And again, it's a direct consequence from the definition. Well, you see that these are really kind of trivial things, um, but it's, you know, interesting to, to discuss. These are true statements. Now, the third one is not really a, 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 a direct consequence of the, um, of the definition, and it's actually quite interesting. If you have a product of two matrices, and you would like to inverse it, and let's consider that these matrices are invertible by themselves, each of them then it's equal to multiplication of their inverse, but in inverse order. So to inverse the product, you have to inverse each component, but multiply it in the reverse order. Again, how can I prove that this is x times y inverse? Well, I have to multiply this by x times y, and check if it's equal to uh, identity matrix, right? So let's multiply x, y by this one. And let's see what it's equal to. If it's equal to 1, I mean, if it's equal to identity, sorry, and uh, multiply on, the, on, on another side, on the left, it's also equal to, equals to identity, then this is the proof that this is inverse of this. So let's just check. All right, so I multiply on the right. Now, multiplication of the matrices, uh, as you know, is associative. We already passed this uh, in the lecture dedicated to how to multiply matrices. So the associativity is a true property of the matri matrix multiplication, not commutative, right? So associative, but not commutative. But we don't need commutativeness here. We need only associative law. By associative law, I can just open the parentheses and put parentheses in any way how, how I want it. So I wanted to do it this way. x times y times y minus 1 times x minus 1. That's what it is. Now, by definition of the y to the minus 1, this is, by definition, an inverse matrix to Y, which means their product is identity. Now, identity being multiplied by X gives me X, and X times X to the minus 1, again, by definition of the inverse uh, matrix, is equal to identity. Now, if I will do in a reverse order, Y minus 1, X minus 1, X, Y, is equal to, again, I will open the parentheses and I will put it in this way. Now, this is identity. Multiply by anything, gives me anything, and then this is identity as well. So, no matter how I multiply this, on the left or on the right of the x times y, I will get a, give identity, which means that this is x times y inversed, right? So this is really a little bit less trivial, and it looks interesting. Now, what's also interesting is this. It can be very easily uh, expanded by induction
to a product of n matrices. Assuming again that each matrix has exactly the same dimension square matrix n times n uh, and each matrix is invertible, then this is a true statement. To, inver to, inverse, to invert the product, you have to invert each component uh, and multiply in, uh, the results in the, in the reverse order. Now, this can be proven by induction. It's absolutely trivial, so I'm not going to stop on it. I do suggest you, by the way, yourself to do this particular uh, small exercise. It will take you another maybe couple of minutes. Now, certain matrices are difficult to invert. Well, with two-dimensional matrix, I, in a previous lecture, I actually explicitly built the uh, uh, the inverse matrix. Now, in, in case of three-dimensional and, uh, and more dimensionalities, um, it's a little bit more difficult. However, there are certain matrices which are very easy to invert regardless of dimensionality, and these are diagonal matrices. So diagonal matrices is the, matri the, matrix, the matrices with only diagonal elements not equal to zero. Everything else is equal to zero. So D1, D2, and D3 are not equal to zero. And everything else, now this has coordinates 1, 1, first row, first column, second row, second column, third row, third column, or 4, 5, etc. To invert that matrix is very easy. That's what it is. So you invert each number and they are not equal to zero, put it in exactly the same position, and the result would be the inverted matrix. Well, uh, to prove it is very actually easy. If you want to know what is the result of the multiplication of this times this, Now, let's think about the matrix which is the result. Well, it's a 3 by 3 matrix, obviously. Now, the um, coefficient, the element um, of this matrix at uh, row, I column, uh, row I column J would be the result of the vector uh, in the i's row multiplied as a scalar Scalar, scalar multiplication, scalar product of the column number j. So row number i by column number j. Now, only if i and j are the same, like second row and second column, only in this case we will have a bunch of zeros and one non-equal to zero element <coughs> um, with the, the element number equal to the row number. The second row so the second element, would, would be multiplied by the corresponding column with exactly the same property. So only, only one element, which is exactly on the place equal to the column number, would be not equal to zero. All others will be equal to zero here and there. So only elements like second row and second column, first row and first column, only these elements will be not equal to zero and precisely equal to 1, because I multiply d2 by 1 over d2, right? Or d1 times 1 over d1. All other pairs of vectors, let's say third row and the first column, they have these non-zero elements in different places, which means I multiply 0 by something, or something by 0. So there is always 0 present in every component, if I multiply as a scalar product this, this vector by this vector. So only second by second, or first by first, or third by third multiplication would give me the result equal to 1. And the rest would be 0. And that's exactly what identity matrix actually is. So to invert the matrix which has only this, these elements along the main diagonal 
non equal to zero, you just have to invert each element and place it in the same position. So these are diagonal matrices. That's the general term. Diagonal matrices are very easy to invert. You just invert each element by itself and put it in place. Now, um, another very easy problem is this. If you want to invert the matrix, multiply by a scalar, by a constant. Now, what is this? Well, for obvious consideration, is this. Now, why? How can I prove it? Well, if I multiply Ka times 1 over Ka1 minus 1, now, multiplication of matrices is not commutative, but ma 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 multiplication of matrix and, and constant actually is uh, commutative. So first I will open all the parentheses using the associative law. I put the parentheses here, then I invert them. Then I put parentheses again. This is one, and this is identity matrix. So that's how you prove it. And the last problem which I wanted to present you is this one. Operation of transposition when we are reflecting the matrix around the main diagonal. So main diagonal stays the same, but all other elements are changing the places. So if if I have a matrix A, I transpose into matrix B, the rule is Bij equals to Aji. Row and columns are changing places, right? So we were talking about the matrix transposition when we were talking about the basic operations um, with matrices. Now, um, one of the properties which uh, matrix transposition actually has is very much similar, by the way, to uh, inversion. If you would like to transpose the product of two matrices, then you transpose each one of them but multiply in an opposite order. It's very easy to prove. Uh, um, I, I would like actually you to spend some time to prove it. It's just another couple of minutes, no more than that. Um, and it's all based on the fact that the transpose matrix IJ has the same uh, element as uh, original matrix JI. Now, using this, I can actually prove this very easily. Now, how can I prove that this is inverse of U, uh, U, U, UT, transpose U? Well, I have to multiply this times this and check if it's equal to identity. Same thing on both sides. Well, but let's think about it. Now, U transposed times something else transposed. According to this, it's equal to original this, original this, and transposed. Now, but this is identity because u uh, minus 1 is uh, an inverse of u. Now, transposed, uh, transposition of identity matrix is the same identity matrix, right? Because it's symmetrical. You have all zeros above the main diagonal and all zeros be, uh, below main diagonal, and main diagonal stays in place, right? So the, uh, if it has only ones on the main diagonal and all zeros around it, then transposition will give you exactly the same thing. Now, if I do it on another side,
So I multiply this on the left. On this. Same thing. I will use exactly the same property. It's transposition of this times transposition of that. So I will use reverse order and then transpose. And again, this is identity matrix and transpose will give you identity matrix. Well, that's it. Um, well, let me finish this particular lecture with, again, referring you to unizor.com where um, I would suggest you to go through notes for this particular lecture again. All these problems are, uh, are, are there and uh, just try to do it yourself. I mean, after you have listened to, to this lecture, you should have absolutely no problems to do it yourself. Uh, and uh, if you will be on that site uh, registered, then you can go through the whole educational process with your supervisor or parent. They can enroll, unenroll you in certain um, uh, topics. Uh, you can take exams. You can take as many times these exams as you want um, and, um, and basically present the results to your supervisor or, or, or a parent. I, I do suggest you to get engaged in this educational process. It's very, very interesting and uh, important for development. Well, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.